Michael Bettine here once again for a new edition of It's Cup of Time. Now today I thought I would talk about making videos. I've had some people ask about my setup and what I do and you know, how I put all this together. So I want to run through my basic setup and we'll see what happens. So it's changed quite a bit over the years and I keep trying to improve it. And everything I do here is on uh, an extreme budget. I don't have really any high priced gear and anything fancy, but as a musician who's worked for many years and had to get the most out of whatever gear I've had, I've learned how to get the most out of all the things I'm using to create these videos. When I first started, I was using a camcorder with actual video tape, and that was it. And the video was okay, the sound was kind of sketchy sometimes with the gong, so if you go back and my old videos, uh, the sound isn't always the best because you know those little tiny mics on the camcorder are not the best. But that's all I had. And most of that stuff was put together in iMovie on my iMac at the time because that's what I had. It's free, it came with it, so I used it. And it served its purpose. It got I mean, making quite a few videos, it got things out there, and it helped me to learn how to, to put together videos. So over time, like I said, I've improved it, and I keep trying to improve it, and, you know, next week I could get a little piece of gear or another idea and improve things even more, you know, and the week after or the month after, you know, do something else. So let's talk about kind of recent evolution of what I've been doing. For a long time I was doing a one camera shoot with my main camera which I can point out right there which is a Canon uh, video camera that I picked up a few years ago and it's just a nice easy to use camera it takes a clear picture I can go out of the HDMI from that and I go right into about a 40 inch television that I use as a monitor so I can see myself and kind of get a feel for you know setting the scene how's the lighting and things like that I used to just use the little tiny screen on the camcorder and I'll tell you that's a pain to try to set things up and also to like look at this way and try to if you're moving around or I'm playing or demonstrating things to try to know that you're still in frame. So eventually we got a new television in one of the rooms here so the old TV got relegated to the corner and one of the days I thought I could probably use that as a just as a video monitor so I set it up behind the camera plugged it in and like I said, I can look straight ahead this way, and my main camera, I can see the whole scene, which is going to over here and going to right about there. So that's great. It helps me, like I said, just stay in the main picture of the main camera. I also have a second camera that I started using a while ago. It's a Zoom Q2N 4K. And... It's got a slightly fisheye lens, which I like because it can get a broader perspective here than the Canon one can. I mean, the Canon, I'd have to get so far back to, to, to really get a wide shot. So I like using both of those because I can get sort of this nice close-up shot here and a, the very wide shot that shows a different perspective because I do have it up higher so it's pointing down where this one is pointing more straight on so I'm using that as my b-roll camera as they say for my second shots 
Now that also has audio in it and it's recording the video and the audio. I don't usually use the audio track from that, but I have in the past used it because it, it takes better audio than the camcorder does. So in the past I was using the Q2N for audio. But then I've changed things some since then. And let's look at it, just a couple different ways I was doing audio. And then you can even go back in some of my videos six months or a year ago. And hopefully you notice an improvement to today's videos. Like when I started with the new black logo as opposed to the, the blue logo. So for a long time, especially for something like this, which is mainly just talking, I was using a little lavalier mic here. Just clipped onto my shirt. This, now you can see it against the gong. Just a nice little lavalier, very inexpensive. Uh, I think I paid $30 for this on Amazon. And I would plug this directly into my camcorder. And it's a, it's a great little mic. It, it really is. I'm surprised at the quality. And I used this for two or three years as my main video mic, especially for talking. Now, a couple of problems with this mic are that once you start playing gongs, it just distorts right through this mic terribly. So that doesn't work so well. If I'm playing a gong and I'm right up by it like this, yeah, you're just going to get distortion because the, the gongs overpower the mic. Another problem I have sometimes is rustling like the shirt or if I'm talking like this and my hand brushes against it. And also it tends to pick up all the mouth sounds, like if I'm swallowing or things like that. It really, because it's so close, it picks up all those little sounds that I would have to spend a lot of time editing out in post-production, either using software or sometimes I'd actually go in and cut those out. And uh, let me tell you, that's a pain in the butt to do something like that. So those are some of the problems with a little lavalier like this. And even a high quality lavalier is still going to have those same problems because it's just the nature of the mic. But it's a great little mic. I'm not using it for this video, but I used it for many, many years and it was great. So then in post-production, putting together a video, I would have the audio from this as the audio track on the camcorder. And then I would also have the if I was using the second camera, I'd have the audio from the Zoom. And I did that many times because the Zoom recorded the gong so much better. But it didn't pick up the voice as well as I would like. So I'd have to go in and edit and balance things. And it was a lot of work. When I, going back just a couple of years... Yeah, probably about two years or so, really when, when this whole cup of time thing I put together. It used to take me approximately two whole days to make one video. I would shoot on one day, usually a Wednesday. And to set it all up and get everything going on that often took me five, six hours just to shoot like an hour long video. And then the next day, like on a Thursday, I would put that all together and edit it in and all that. And that would take me another five to eight hours. So really, I was spending two whole days just to make one video. And it was a lot of work. But I've managed to streamline my process. And... I usually put together a video in maybe five hours now, in one day. Like what I'm shooting now, it's mid-afternoon here. I'll edit it tonight and have it done. Now I can load it up to YouTube for 
whenever it's going to be scheduled. So I've learned to be more efficient in my process in a couple ways, better gear, better utilization of the gear I have, and just learning how to set things up better and how to use my software, my video software better, which I'm using DaVinci Resolve. I used iMovie at first, then I used Final Cut Pro for a while, but I always found Final Cut Pro, I never got the handle on it I wanted. I always wanted software, video software, that worked like audio software. And somebody turned me on to DaVinci Resolve, so I tried it out and was like, oh, this is just like working with Logic, which is the audio software I mainly work with, Logic Pro. So that really changed things for me because it, it was more intuitive. And again, it was very much like working with audio. And DaVinci Resolve does have a really great audio program within it called Fairlight. So it's, it's really nice to work with. But we're getting ahead of things. Let's look at my setup here. So like I said, for a long time I used the little lavalier mic for a lot. But I stopped using that a few months ago because I came up with a better solution. But let's talk about what I was doing before I get to the, the current setup. So there's various ways I could do it. Like I said, I could run audio into the auxiliary in on the camcorder, either from something like the Zoom uh, 4K there, or plug this directly in, the lavalier directly in, or I could come out of like my Zoom H6 right into the camcorder. But I, I never found that to work really well because it's so hard to balance the levels where the audio on the camcorder isn't all distorted because you've overloaded it. So what I do is I use the audio on the camcorder as a guide track to be able to sync all the other audio tracks, whatever I'm using, synchronize those to that and the video. And then I get rid of, I just delete the uh, camcorder audio out of there. So here's a setup I was using. Let me just grab a couple of things here. For a long time, I would, I was having the microphones way over here, either just in front of the camera or just past the camera. And for a lot of things I was doing, let's get those here where we can see them. There we go. I'm going to begin to see other. Oh, it's easier to see, I think, there. For a long time, I was using uh, large condenser microphones, my SE 4400s. They're really great. I love them. They're fantastic mics. But if I have them over here and they're recording the gongs really well and I'm talking here, the, the voice was always kind of lacking. So I was doing the three mic setup, the lavalier for my voice and the large diaphragm condensers to pick up the actual music, the sound of the gongs and stuff. And post-production, it was just a lot of work. Again, I had to cut and chop and balance, and it really was a pain. As nice as these are, they, they you know, and then if I got them closer, you know, like this, then they're in the camera, and here I am trying to do a video, and, you know, there's the mics. So great microphones. I love them, love them, love them. They weren't quite doing what I really needed, what I required. So what I did, I came up with an idea because I saw uh, something on the internet and it was this desk clamp. It's this design, it, to mount a, a mic and maybe a, a boom or a gooseneck on your desk, like if you're doing podcasts. So if this is your desk, this is a 
you know, it's just a clamp like this that it goes here and there's a tightener and it locks right onto your desk. And I saw that and it's like, it was like $12, <laughs> really inexpensive. And I thought I could throw that up above on a beam up above here and hang a couple mics. That sounded like a great idea. So I got it, put some mics up there and it works out great. That's what I'm using right now. I have a pair of small diaphragm condensers, my SE8 microphones, and they are right up above. They're approximately 48 inches in front of the gongs and then about seven feet up in the air. And it's a high quality microphone so I can play the gongs and as long as my levels are are balanced and not too hot I'm going to get a really nice sound and as you can see now I mean they pick up my voice very well and the quality is so much better I think than the little clip-on lavalier and also they don't pick up all the the breath and mouth and all the different sounds and noises that a real close mic like the lavalier picks up and I can, you know, I can be talking and I can turn around and, you know, play something and talk about it and you can hear it. So it's a really nice setup and I like it a lot. They're, they're great microphones. Uh, I will put links down below for all the microphones I'm talking about. But I really like the microphones from SE Electronics. I've spoken about them before on recording gong videos earlier. I think they are really amazing microphones for a real reasonable cost. A pair of the SE8s run a little over $500 for a match stereo pair and you get a nice stereo bar with those and a nice you know, aluminum case and everything so it, it's a good deal and they're high quality mics. These have the cardioid capsules, which captures sound more from directly from the front and slightly off axis, but not behind or anything. And you can also get additional capsules or just buy the mics with the Omni capsules, which capture sound from all around in front of and behind and to, to the side of the mic. The cardioid capsules are really nice and they're right up there. They are in, a lot of people use a, an XY position where you have two mics this way or just slightly over each other and they're pointing this way. So like the one on my left, if you were to turn around and face the way I am, the one on my left is actually the right mic because it's pointing at the right side and one on my right is actually the left mic because it's pointing at the left. But that's an XY pattern and it's one of the more popular stereo configurations. A lot of people would use that. I'm using a little different pattern. I'm a big fan of the ORTF pattern which is the French Radio and Television Organization. And what they do instead of having the mics crossed over, they have them going out like this. I'll put up a graphic for what the ORTF is. And what it's designed to you know, simulate is the human head and the ears and the mics are sort of spaced where your ears would be and coming out at a front angle. That is the ORTF. But what I'm actually using is a slight modification on that, which is the NOS system which is the Dutch radio and television and they kind of take the ORTF and widen it just a little bit and again I'll put a graphic up and I'll put some links down to mic positions and all that below so you can do your own research and see what I'm talking about but I like the NOS because it's a little wider I because these are close I found the ORTF was a little narrow as far as getting the sound stage I wanted in headphones when I'm listening to one of my videos. So I've got the mics right up here and they're actually like right there. 
which right above and the NOS pattern so they're pointed out this way and I think they get a nice spread if I'm playing just this setup or I play something over here on the side or maybe something over here and again if I move around and talk it gets a good pickup and it also gets a good stereo image like you can hear me on this side if I move over here you can hear me over on this side so it's it's a nice setup I like it I've been using it uh, for a few months now so again if you were to go back and listen to some earlier videos this year and to the videos last year you should notice a change in the sound hopefully a change for the better I think it's been better so that's my basic chain and what I'm doing I'm I've got a couple different ways I can capture the sound from the overheads basically that's what it is it's like a, a pair of drum overheads so if you see a drum set in the studio and they got a couple mics up ahead above them although those are normally XY it's just my overheads there's a couple different ways I can capture it one way is I can go into my Focusrite interface into one of my MacBooks and use that and then record directly into Logic but what I've been doing I, I don't know I just didn't feel like doing that again trying to simplify things in a way because my studio is actually in two separate rooms this is the the sound room the instrument room where I record all the sounds but over on the other side is where I have my desk and my main computer and all my monitors and you know my speaker monitors and everything and that's where I put everything together so I have to take what's ever recorded in here and transfer it over there so again one way I could do when I'm normally recording like an album recording something like that I will run all my mics into my interface I have an eight channel focus right interface in this room and then run that into my MacBook and record directly live into logic so that's my main recording setup but for the videos here just to simplify things so if I can drag this into the picture with I don't really have enough cord there we go here is my trusty zoom h6 and I'm just running the two overheads into the H6. And it works out well. It's, it's pretty easy. And then when I'm done recording, I pop the SD card out of the Focusrite. I pop the SD card out of the Canon camcorder. And I pop the SD card out of the Zoom recorder, the Zoom video recorder. And I've got three SD cards and I walk them across to the next room to my desk and then one at a time I will load them into my computer there and transfer all the information make a little folder and then I will go into DaVinci Resolve so the main thing the first thing I do is put in the Canon camcorder the main picture feed and audio I put that into DaVinci then I will put my b-roll which is up there the zoom recorder I will put that in both video and audio and then I will take the audio from up above and I usually put it into logic and edit it balance some levels I don't normally put any effects on it this because I want you to hear what I'm hearing in this room so I don't use any compression I don't use any reverb I don't use anything else on the audio for the for the video here the one thing I do use a lot is automation and I will put it into logic and if there's really really quiet parts and really really loud parts I will use automation to kind of balance them out more bring the quiet up bring the loud down so I get more of a middle here 
which I think works out better for video than to have such a wide dynamic range. So I will do that. I will take automation and balance things out, but not compression, because what compression does is squash everything. It takes your highest sounds and your lowest sounds you know, in volume, and it just squashes them into the middle. And that actually changes the sound changes the sound of the transients and things like that, which is fine if you're making a rock record. I'm playing gongs here. I, I want you to, again, hear it like I'm hearing it when I'm playing in this room. So I will use automation, which just changes the volume. It does not squash the sound in any way. It's just, oh, this is loud. It's just like taking a volume knob and you just turn it down. or I can't hear that. Okay, sh turn it up. So that's all I'm doing really in, in post-processing of the audio for these videos. So then once it's done in Logic, I will export that into a, a WAV file and then add that into DaVinci Resolve. And I sync the two video and the three audio tracks up, make sure everything is synchronized. And the easy way I found to synchronize is when I start a video out or if I have a cut point, well, let's say I make a mistake and I have to start over as I just use two claps. Because the claps, and we'll, maybe we'll look at this on the computer, the claps show up as big spikes in the audio waveform. So I can see you know, where, where the beginning is. And again, if I have to do a cut, and, do, and I know I have to do an edit, edit out a mistake, if there's a, a clap in there, I can see that spike, and I know, okay, that's, that, that's where I gotta cut things out. But it makes it very easy to visually align things, because you look at them and you go, okay, here's one spike, here's another spike, oh, now we've got them together. Now DaVinci Resolve does have some auto-sync functions uh, depending on what I'm doing, especially with the gong sometimes. Uh, it doesn't like to auto-sync as well as if I'm just doing dialogue or something like that. Or if I had um, pop music or something that's more rhythmic. It, it, I think it is easier to find sync points. So I often... I have a good eye. I just usually sync them by, you know, by waveform on the screen, and then it works out fine. So once I get everything synchronized, I delete the camcorder audio and the zoom audio, and just keep the the main audio from the overhead mics. So I have three tracks to work with: two cameras and one audio. And then when I'm putting it together. Uh, like the intro music and the outro music and stuff. I'll add, add all those in there as additional audio tracks. And it works out really well. And I like it. So that's my main setup in here. I should probably talk about the lights. I use basically two overhead lights. There's one over here and one over here. And I have one light down here, a floor light to kind of light up like these guys in the back here and anything else so that hopefully I get, get sort of a, a nice dynamic with the lighting. Now because I don't have a real tall ceiling here it's hard to get like an overhead light like they talk about well you need one to kind of come in from this way and all that. Uh, I'm doing the best I can so I've just got two lights up here and one down here and they're all easily movable but I think the picture looks pretty good like this so they pretty much stay where they are. One thing I've found for all of this is just go on YouTube. You can learn so much about how to make a video on YouTube. There are some really great websites and depending on whatever software you use, if you use iMovie, uh, what is it, Adobe Premiere, if you use um, Final Cut Pro for Apple, if you use DaVinci Resolve, which is both Apple and Windows. Um, some of these, you know, there's probably multiple channels on each of those softwares with how to use it. 
from beginner to advanced. That's what I did. DaVinci Resolve. Okay, boom. Go online. Type it up. There's many channels of really expert guys and gals talking about how to use DaVinci Resolve. Same thing with audio, like Logic or whatever, Audio DAW, as we've talked about before, a digital audio workstation, which is just your audio software. How to use that and how to work with that with your sound. And lighting, how to, how to, how to light things up. And sound, how to mic things up. So there's, we live in such an amazing time because we have the internet. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot of cat videos and there's a lot of, you know, weird stuff out there and that. But there is so much good information. And YouTube is like going to school and so much of it is free. And if you want to go deeper, many of the people who have YouTube channels also have expanded courses that you can pay for. And many of them are very reasonable. But go on YouTube, look up lighting. How do I, how do I light a YouTube video? or a blog video or something like that or you know TikTok or whatever channel you're on. Now, how do I light a video? That's all I did. And cuz I I'm not a lighting person. I I'm a music person. So I went on there and okay. Ah, I can do this and this and this and then you know, okay, I have limitations with my room. Uh, what can I do there? So I played with it in I don't know. I like to look at my videos. Let me know if you do or don't. And, you know, maybe I'll get better lights down the road. But these seem to be doing a decent job right now. So do that. Go on YouTube. Look up lighting. Look up um, how to set up microphones for like a video. If you, you know, different things. And if you're just doing a talking video, you know, how to do all that sort of stuff. Because that's different if you're doing more of an interview sort of video versus playing instruments and you know look up lighting look up audio look up all the software and how to use that to put it all together so that's pretty much for this room uh you know i've got some dark curtains behind me so you know i have a nice background uh, not much else you know other than th this is the room and it has a, a fairly dry sound now the only sort of reverb you hear are the gongs here in response to my clapping but it's a fairly dry room which i have said in previous videos i really like because you can't take reverb out of a recording well you can now i do have d reverb software but sometimes depending on how the actual audio is it's you know you could uh, you can take it out, but it's you might have artifacts or something. But that's a whole other story. But anyway, it's much easier to for me, for what I do, to record in a dry room and then add reverb later if I need to. Okay, so thanks for watching this half of the video. We will take a look at the other part of the studio and how I put everything together. So here we are on the other side of my studio, my more or less control room. I've got my M1 MacBook here. I've got my two channel audio interface here, my audio monitors and two extra video monitors. So how I have them set up, I've got, here's Logic Pro with the two audio tracks that I recorded earlier in the other room. And then here is DaVinci Resolve, where I've loaded all the audio and video tracks already. So over here, I've got two channels, left and right. All I did was look through it to make sure the levels were good. I panned each channel far left and far right. 
And I did have a couple of hot spots, like right here where I was walking around and I was right under the microphones talking loud enough that I got a little distortion there, a little hot spot. So I came in with automation here and brought the levels down and then brought it back up. There were two spots like that. So I corrected that, brought it down so it's not such a hot spot. And that's pretty much all I did with the audio. And then I bounced it into one stereo file, brought that over into my files here, and then loaded it into DaVinci Resolve. So we can see I've got my B-roll audio or video here. This is the wide angle camera. And then I have, let's get a better picture here. There we go. Then I have my main camera here. And here is the audio for the main camera. This is the audio for the second camera. And then this is the mixed audio from Logic Pro. So I brought them in. You can kind of see these little lines here. Those are my hand claps and synchronized everything. And then these two are muted. I'll eventually delete them. But that's that's basically what I do. And sometimes, depending on how things go, I might use the second audio from the, the Zoom video camera. Just because maybe it picks up something differently. So I have been known to use that. For the most part, I just go in and delete. And let's see, we'll take this one out. I will just move this guy up. Kind of have to resync it a little bit, but and then get rid of this guy. So now I have one audio track and two video tracks to work with. So I will put together the main video and edit it. And then when that's all done, I will go in and I will put in the intro here with my intro slides and my intro music, like the gong hits I'm using. And then at the very end of it, I will put in my um, exit slides and exit music and then put that all together. Then I can render it down into one video file and I'm all set. So basically, I mean, that's all I do. Although it's quite a process. And you can see here, here's my three, my three uh, cards from each thing. Here's the one from the, the main camcorder. Here's the one from the, the Zoom 4K for video. And then here's my one for the audio from the H6. So I take all of those. Plug them in here. Thankfully, the new Macs have a card slot again. Uh, that was one of the worst things they ever did was take out the card slot, but that's back in the new M1 and M2 Macs. So the card slot, I just dump it in here, put it in a file, a working video file, and then I pull all of what I need for the video out of this file. And then it's all kept on a separate hard drive. I have a little Samsung SSD here, a one terabyte one where I keep all my audio and video projects because it's, it, I like to have them off board because I can move them around if necessary. But so here's all my files, put them in here. Now I can edit things so I can just kind of look at this here. And I've got everything going. I don't have the audio. Oh, I still have this muted. That's why. We will unmute it. Hi, Michael Bettine here once again for a new where I would probably want to have the main one. So we go back. Hi, Michael Bettine here once again. For a new edition of It's Cup of Time.
So there we go. That's making video. Uh, again, I try to really simplify everything, at least for my use. It's taken years of working with the stuff to put all this together, to learn all the software, and to find a flow. It's no different than playing the gongs and bowls and that and doing a session and having a flow. I have a flow now. As I said earlier, it used to easily take me two full days to make one video, maybe an hour's worth of video. And that was torture. That was a lot of work. That was a real pain. And I've gotten better at everything. And now I can just shoot the video, come over here, pop it in, and edit the audio, get it ready, put it in there, sync everything, and then I can go through and edit the video and put it together and usually just a couple hours for that. So maybe five hours to produce a one hour video. When I have the chance, I try to shoot two or three videos in one day and then edit them and then schedule them out on YouTube. Like I have, I believe, tomorrow's video and next week's video are already up there. And I put those out like three weeks ago because I knew I would be going to Gong Camp last week. And I wouldn't have time to do any sort of video production. I've been a busy schedule here. So there we go. That's my setup. I have the, the room over there, which is my instrument studio the recording part that's where i shoot all the audio and video that's where i record all the audio for any sort of uh, download release i'm doing and then i bring everything over here to the control room as it were and this is where i put together all my various video and audio projects and I use a lot of different software. Like I said, I'm using DaVinci Resolve for the video, Logic Pro for the audio, and I do have some other audio editing software, depending on what I'm going to do. So sometimes I will take the final version from Logic and I can work on it in a as a stereo file in a different program if it needs some sort of work there you go i hope this has been a bit informative about what i do and how cup of time gets put together here's my big cup of tea i have with me right now so i can work i don't have to keep running upstairs to get more tea so there we go i can monitor with headphones i can monitor with my Kali Audio speakers here, which are really great. Uh, it's a nice little setup. Thanks a lot. I hope this has been informative and just giving you a little look into my world. As always, questions and comments are welcome. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want to be notified, hit the little bell and you, you will get a little notification. There's a new video up. And it's always appreciated if you give it a thumbs up. It's nice to know that my hard work uh, gets acknowledged there. So thanks a lot, and we will see you later.